Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me. Uh, we continue looking at a little sidebar from what we've been doing in recent weeks, actually, in our time together. We've been looking at the Gospel of John. But the last few episodes, we've been examining uh, prayers of, uh, that are examples for us of how we pray for a nation. And we've looked at Daniel chapter 9, which, again, we may duck back and check that out in more detail sometime down the road. And we're looking at Ezra chapter 9 right now. And people say, well, why Ezra? What does that have to say? <laughs> well, we've already seen all right, And we saw the entirety of prayer. We saw how Ezra responded. We saw how uh, certain people, those that trembled at the word of God, came and gathered around him. And we saw what he did. He, he sat there appalled all day long. Then he rose to his knees and he uh, lifted his hands to God and he bowed down before God. And he cried out to God. And we've looked at that prayer. Now, I want us to look at what occurred, okay, because quite often we'll sit there and, and look at a prayer and say, okay, this is what they prayed. Like in Daniel chapter 9, when Daniel prayed, an angel was sent at the moment that he started his supplication. An angel came and responded to him, and in four verses gave him the balance of what was going to happen with history. I mean, it's amazing. Well, what we have in Ezra is uh, chapter 10 begins that. We've already looked at all of chapter 9, so chapter 10 the first couple of verses are just amazing. The first verse is, so just listen to this. So here's Ezra chapter 10, verse 1. While Ezra prayed and made confession. So you notice there's a timing thing. It's while. So Ezra is praying. He's making confession. While Ezra prayed and made confession, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God. So just just. Just read this really slow. Listen to this. What was he doing? He was praying. He was confessing. We've seen that already. He was weeping. So you see, this is a very emotional thing. This wasn't just a little pious platitude type of thing. And he cast himself down before the house of God. We've seen already that he tore his robe and he tore his cloak and he pulled hair out of his head and out of his beard. <coughs> Remember that? He had done all that in humbling himself before God. And he's doing this before the house of God. So he's doing this publicly, folks. He's doing it out in front of everybody. So again, while Ezra prayed and made confession, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, a very great assembly of men, women, and children gathered to him out of Israel for the people wept bitterly. I think there is such a picture here for us, folks. Here is one man, one man who was righteously irritated because of the state of the sin of the nation and what they were doing, who came before God, who was confessing, who was weeping, who humbled himself in a multitude of ways, who publicly fell before God and was praying and not just a little three-minute pastoral prayer, okay? Nothing like that. No, he was casting his heart and everything before God. And when you go back and review that prayer that we've already looked at in, down, in chapter 9, you see that. Do you see the response? The people responded. A great assembly, not just a few, a lot of them, a great assembly, and not just the men, but the women. And not just the men and women, the children. You know, so often we sit there and say, well, you know, we really can't have a time of worship and we can't do anything unless we have child care. I think we really sort of mess up with that. I mean, I really do. And, and I, this, this isn't just a, um, you know, an academic type of thing because I've been in situations for years where we would have the children in among us, okay? And when you see an eight-year-old child in a time of prayer, look up and look at someone who's in their 50s and say, you were praying this this morning, and the Lord has revealed to that eight-year-old child what somebody was praying, then gives him a word for him. You know, that's profound. Now, I understand and totally support 
that there are times when children need to be taught in a different kind of way. There's times when uh, people need to be in different situations, for instance, okay? Uh, children may not need to be in a gathering when something's being discussed. I understand that, okay? Also, I understand that the women may not be, need to be there or the men may not be need to be there, okay? This may be something that ladies just need to discuss with one another and support one another, encourage one another in, okay? I have no problem with that. But what I love right here is that here is one man who is praying, and when he does, and the people see it, they respond. And so it's a great assembly of men, women, and children gathered to him out of Israel, for the people wept bitterly. They knew what the issue was. Okay, They knew what the prayer was that was being lifted up. They could hear it. And word was going out, and the people responded. What would happen in each one of our situations? If one person did this, okay, and I'm talking about in the midst of whatever, in the midst of your friends, if one person prayed in this way, in the midst of your family, if one person prayed, in the midst of all the body of Christ where, where you gather together, okay, your local portion of the body of Christ, if one person truly interceded, if one person truly prayed. Let's look at the second verse we'll be done today. And Shechaniah, the son of Jehiel, of the sons of Elam, addressed Ezra. So here comes a guy named Shechaniah, and we get his family lineage. And he comes up to Ezra, and he says this, We have broken faith with our God and have married foreign women from the peoples of the land. But even now, there is hope for Israel in spite of this. <laughs> Excuse me. Don't you love that? Here this guy is, he comes up to Ezra and he says, you know, you're right. We have broken faith. We have done this. And then he, he, he voices what the sin is. We've married foreign women from the peoples of the land. And God had told him point blank, don't do that. But then that great, powerful word, that great word, which can sometimes be scary, but, but even now there is hope for Israel in spite of, of this. So, and this guy comes up and he says, you know what, we've done this, but there is hope. The first word of the next verse, which we're not going to get into right now, is therefore. Therefore. So he comes up, Shechaniah does, and he proclaims the truth. We have broken faith. But then he gives them hope by saying that there is hope to come. Okay? There's hope for Israel, even in spite of this. And then we're going to find the next verse that it's just not a pious little hope you know, pie in the sky hope, he offers a solution. I would say the same. It could be said for all of us. We have sinned individually. We have sinned corporately, particularly corporately. Folks, we have just barked up the wrong tree for so long. And most what, of what passes as the work of the kingdom of God simply is not. And this isn't my opinion. Just go look at the word of God. Go look in the Word of God and see if what you see in the Scripture is what you see organizationally within the body of Christ, okay? Just see that. But I'm telling you what, if we go before the Lord, if we go before the Lord, if we repent, if we confess, there is hope. And I think God wants to do great and marvelous and wonderful things to His praise and His honor his glory. Again, I'm Dale. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, again, do pass the word about these times, okay? That's the only way that we really grow is when one person says, hey, will you join us in this time? Will you join me uh, in the word of God? And then this will give you something to discuss with them. You know, you may agree, you may disagree, whatever. But we're coming together around the word of God empowered by his spirit and watch what people do. I'll see you next time.